Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to talk about the different options that you've got on your nose guns on the fighters that we're going to be flying. Um, you know, there's a couple different things I'm going to be testing in this video, and in the background you're going to see me doing some testing and some results, uh, you know, from really spending some time in the uh, VR training area. Now, when we're talking about what I'm actually testing, I'm not only just testing the uh, stock versus the A to A option. Uh, later on, you're going to see that I'm using the Empire specific nose guns as well, and that's where some things actually get pretty interesting. Uh, with that being said, the, one of the biggest things that I'm actually experimenting with is what's a better buy? Uh, is the reload speed going to be better, or is the max magazine size going to be better? Now, I personally fly a lot, so I've got uh, a lot of certs dumped into my reaver, and I'm actually going to start doing that with the scythe and uh, mosquito a little bit more as well. But I've made some bad buys, uh, and I want to make sure that I can give you guys the information that you need so you're making good purchases and not feeling like you're wasting your certs or spinning your wheels. Now, keep in mind, there's different options, and they all have their place. And you're going to see when I actually throw up all the results on the end, or at the end of this, that each of these options has some merit. That being said, there's a couple trends that are really, really consistent. Um, and I, I tested a lot more than you're actually going to see here in the video, but I'm going to show you the results here at the end. The uh, reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to bore you to tears by actually just staring at me sitting on the ground shooting at these vehicles. So, that being said, let's talk about the different nose guns. You've got the uh, M20 Mustang and the Vortec Rotary. Uh, the M20 Mustang is going to be your stock option and the Rotary is going to be your air-to-air. -air. Uh, for the TR, you've got the M18 Needler and the M18 Rotary. Uh, again, Rotary is obviously going to be air-to-air. -air. And then with the Scythe, uh, we've got the Sauron Cannon, which is the uh, primary, and then the Hailstorm Turbo Laser, which is going to be the air-to-air -air option. So, with that... The stock claim on all these weapons is always that it's effective against all targets. So, you know, you, presumably you're going to be strong against the air, you're going to be strong against the ground, you're going to be strong against uh, armor, all of those sorts of things. Uh, maybe it's not you're going to be great with them, but you would think that you would at least be capable with all of those. Now, for the air-to-air -air weapon, the claim is that it's ideal for air superiority. So with that in mind, you, it, what comes to mind is that you're going to be really good against aircraft, uh, but you're not going to do a whole lot of damage against the ground. Well, in my testing, that doesn't always seem to be the case. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to some results so you can actually see what the breakdown actually is. Alright guys, so what you're actually looking on the screen, outside of just some pretty pictures that I put up for you, is going to be the time to kill data that I collected in the testing. Um, this is going to really kind of show some different things. And you can see each of the fighter has two different categories, the reload speed versus the magazine size, because that's what I really wanted to test. Now I got some other data that I'll talk about in a sec, but you can see each one of these fighters I engaged a Sunderer. Also, with each one of these fighters, I engaged a main battle tank. Now, for the Reaver and the Mosquito, I was attacking a uh, Mag Rider. For the side, I was actually engaging a uh, Vanguard. Now, that may skew the results from fighter to fighter, but it's important to what you actually want to be looking at is the differences with it within each fighter's category. So, with that in mind, the different trends that I've noticed here... Well, one, the difference between magazine and reload speed, uh, magazine size turned out to be better one time more than the reload. Now, it's an odd number because the air-to-air uh, -air gun against the mag rider for the reaver actually it was a tie. So that's kind of breaking even. So you can tell that they're actually pretty close there. Now, one thing that you will notice is if you're going to be using the stock weapon, you can see that the stock is better with the magazine size just about every time. Now, uh, c you know, conversely, if you're using the air-to-air -air gun, the uh, reload speed actually turns out to be the better option for you. So, depending on what, you know, weapon you're actually trying to fly with or what you've already purchased or what you've already spent your certs on, um, you know, that's where you're going to want to kind of lie. Now, it's a little bit different. Make sure you're kind of referring to this chart and you can kind of make your own decision. But those would be my recommendations. Stock with mag size, rotary with reload speed. Now, it kind of makes sense that the air-to-air -air gun is going to be, you know, better with the reload because it has such a high rate of fire and you're going to be running out of ammo often. Whereas with the stock gun, you can put down more sustained fire where the magazine size allows you to kind of capitalize on that. Now, one strange trend that I noticed in here, and remember what I explained was the uh, description of each of these weapons. A to A guns are ideal for air superiority. So that thought that they're not going to be great against ground armor really is kind of tossed out the window. Um, you can see that for every test that I did, the uh, air-to-air -air gun is actually better against armored targets, and not just by a little bit. 
you know, especially when we're talking about Sunderers, you're talking about 10 seconds, you know, on the Mosquito. It actually turns out to be a 15-second difference. That is a big difference when you're hovering there trying to kill your target or doing passes. And maybe you've got somebody actually trying to repair the vehicle while you're attacking it. So keep in mind, if you've got the funds available, I would suggest getting the air-to-air. -air. Not only for the fact that you can be a better all-around craft, you can attack the air and ground and be more effective overall, um, but it, it's just going to make you, it's just the better option. It really is. Now, the stock gun isn't without its own merits. And when we talk about those, you know, it's got a smaller crosshair, which means it's going to be more accurate. The cone of fire on the air to air weapon is pretty big. So unless you're actually pretty close, you may not hit all of your shots, which is going to increase your time to kill a little bit. So you can have a little bit more control and you've got more sustained fire with the stock gun. So kind of just play to your strengths and how you like to play. I personally would always recommend the air-to-air -air rotary, but, um, you know, like I said, it, the stock isn't without its own merits. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, Empire-specific ones, because that's where things really start to get interesting. All right, and by interesting, what I really mean is kind of wacky. Now, each faction's got a very specific nose gun that they can use. Now, obviously, all of the fighters are unique, so their weapons are going to be a little bit different, but these are where the uh, kind of unique abilities of the uh, vehicles kind of uh, come into play. Uh, for the Reaver, you've got the Air Hammer. It's the one most people are saying is a little bit overpowered right now. Um, this might help to make that argument, to be honest with you. Um, basically, it's the Air Shotgun. It's the, uh, it's got, it fires a canister shell, um, you know, anywhere between three and seven rounds, depending how uh, much you've put into the magazine size. Uh, you know, it's really strong against pretty much everything. It's really designed to be more of an anti-infantry weapon, but it's good against, uh, you know, air targets and ground targets as well. For the uh, VS, you've got the light PPA on the side. This is going to fire kind of just plasma balls. It's kind of bizarre. Um, it's labeled as close range, but really it's pretty effective at medium range as well. Now, it does splash damage, which is going to help you out when you're engaging infantry, and it actually is really disorienting when you're being hit by these. And then for the Mosquito, you've got the uh, Banshee, which is uh, going to be more of a medium-ranged uh, weapon. It says that it fires 14 millimeter explosives. Uh, it's a Gatling-style weapon that does, you know, quite a bit of damage. Now, there's one interesting thing that you're going to notice here, and it's that magazine size, when maxed out, is always going to be better with these specific nose guns than it is against the uh, reload speed. Uh, it's just going to be the better way to go. So if you plan on using one of these three options, make sure that you're putting your time and efforts into mag size versus actually spending time on the uh, reload. Again, for the scythe, when you've got 70 rounds at the max mag size, you can just do unleash continuous hell. Now, the single most interesting thing I found when testing this is, each one of these kills a Sunderer faster than it kills a Mag Rider. Look, I mean, you can just check it out. Regardless of reload or mag size or which fighter you're actually using, it kills a more heavily armored target faster than it does a lighter armored target. I don't have a clue why this is or why this is built in or if this is some sort of mistake. Um, but as is right now, if you're hunting Sunderers, <laughs> throw on one of these specific weapons. I mean, you can see the Reaver can kill a uh, Sunderer in under 10 seconds. Now, it's got a much shorter uh, range than the uh, Scythe or the Mosquito does, so you're mu much more likely to be taking a fire of some sort. But uh, it can be done. Uh, I'm not sure if this is something that they meant to do or what, but by everything else we've seen in the game, it doesn't make much sense to me. So if you know why this is, let me know. But keep in mind, this is the most interesting and bizarre thing i found in the game so far. So... Uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to get something out of this and, uh, you know, you can uh, customize your craft the way you want to. Uh, if you found this interesting or liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, hit subscribe if you're not yet. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Take care.